So the RMP is used to set frequencies for communication on the transceivers. But how to listen to those frequencies and how to dedicate which transceiver we want to transmit on, that is the job of the ACP. The audio control panels allows the flight crew to use all the radio communication and radio navigational facilities installed in the aircraft. It allows for the use of the interphone system. It allows for the use of the call system as well as the public address system, the PA. The system itself includes an audio management unit, three ACPs, although a fourth and even a fifth ACP can be installed. But the three that come with the aircraft are installed underneath the RMPs. So ACP number one for the captain on the left side of the pedestal. ACP number two underneath RMP number two for the first officer on the pedestal. And ACP number three on the overhead panel right underneath next to the RMP number three. Headset jacks and boom set connectors for each pilot and co-pilot as well as for the third occupant are also installed in the cockpit. Headset jacks for the fourth occupant only, so there's no mic connection for the fourth occupant. Boom sets for the pilots and third occupant and three hand microphones together with three cockpit oxygen mask microphones. In the presentation in the A320 ground school on oxygen, we talked about the use of the oxygen mask and how the microphone inside the oxygen mask was used using the ACP. We also incorporate press to talk switches on each side stick together with two loudspeakers with individual volume control knobs and headset jacks and service interphones around the aircraft and in the cargo compartment, allowing us to talk to and communicate with ground crew around the aircraft, the engines, cargo area, as well as in the nose wheel bay for the aircraft. Bringing the ACP a little bit closer, I want to divide it into two parts. First, the transmission keys, and then the audio reception knobs. The transmission keys right here, although you'll never see the panel in normal operation with everything lit up as it is right here, you will see only the dedicated transceiver with a green light. Only one. It's called transmission keys for a reason. When you wish to transmit on a frequency, you will then push the dedicated transmission key and the green light will illuminate in that key, indicating that this is the frequency that you are now transmitting on. But in order for you to transmit, you of course have to use the microphone, the boom mic, the oxygen mask, or the push to talk on your side stick to actually communicate. But where you're transmitting, where you're communicating, is based on the selection you have made here on the transmission key. You are only able to transmit on one VHF or HF transceiver at any given time. On the other hand, the reception knobs allows the occupants, the pilots, to listen to the set frequencies. And while you can only transmit on one frequency at any given time, you can listen to as many as you want at the same time. When you want to listen to a set frequency, let's say VHF1 right here, you will push down on the round reception knob and it will be spring-loaded, the little knob will come up and then the head of the reception knob will illuminate white. You then turn it and use it as a volume knob. You have now activated the listening on VHF number one. If I wanted to listen to VHF number two at the same time, I'll just push the reception knob here, 
turn the volume up appropriately. And I can also listen to the interphone and the cabin crew via those dedicated channels. I am in this case listening to multiple audio channels, VHF1, VHF2, interphone and cabin. But when it comes to transmission, the system needs to know which dedicated frequency and transceiver you want to transmit through. Therefore, the transmission keys up here only allows you to make one selection at a time. On the panel itself, you have this three position toggle switch. In its neutral position, which is set right here, it does not allow for any operation. You can say that it is off. It's not the panel that is off, it is just the transmission. You can use this in the same way you use the push to talk on your side stick to transmit. Pilots often use this panel and this uh, position switch to communicate when we are in flight and the autopilot is engaged to minimize the use of putting your hand on the side stick with the autopilot engaged. Pushing this knob to the down position towards the rat, it's spring loaded, so you'd have to hold it down. But holding it down means you can then talk into your microphone and that is transmitted on the active frequency selected on the transmission key. Release the little toggle switch and it goes back to neutral. So it's like a push to talk. You push it, you talk, you release. If you, on the other hand, want to have an open mic, you take the same selection key and you push it up. This is not spring loaded. It will stay in that position and you now have a hot mic. Anything you say will now be transmitted. You do not have to sit and hold this key down in the rat position. We can use the interphone in the int, for example, if we have the oxygen mask don't and we want to establish communication between the two flight crew members with an open communication. When it comes to talking to the passengers, etc., we have a dedicated PA system, reception and transmission over here. We have a dedicated cabin crew transmission and reception here. And the int mechanic over here is for communicating with the ground personnel, which would be connected in via the nose wheel bay, in the cargo compartments, or at the engines or around the aircraft. The knobs, the transmission keys right here, do also have an amber indication for incoming calls. If someone is trying to reach us from the outside, you will get a buzzer and an indication right there saying a call is coming in. You can then turn to the appropriate transmission and of course set the reception knob so you can listen and establish communication that way. 